Welcome to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks Jr. Hallelujah. Love me more than I love myself. Died for me. But most importantly, uh, uh, he was resurrected into full life for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And because Jesus was resurrected, so was I. Hallelujah. When I, when hallelujah, when that, when it tells me to, to pick up my cross, hallelujah, I pick it up because my old self is crucified on it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that's how you got to start thinking about who you used to be. You better start thinking about that old man or old woman as somebody dead on the cross. Hallelujah. Dead and buried. And I was re resurrected into a new person. Hallelujah. I, I, what they used to say, mother hands, I, 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 I looked at my hands. I looked at my feet. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I had the same hands and I had the same feet, but what I wanted to do with them is different. Hallelujah. It, it, you know, and, and, I, and I've been there and I so thank God I've graduated. We have wanted uh, uh, so much to keep what we've come out of. Hallelujah, that we have, uh, 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 we, we, we haven't really experienced what we're getting into. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I forgot all about that, thank you. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And, and so, like I said, we, we're, we're trying to hang on, but we need to let go and let God. God has so much more for us. God has so much more for us. Hallelujah. So as we continue in this spiritual transformation, hallelujah, I thank God um, to see the visitors that have come for the uh, uh, the blessing of the children. Amen. So I, I, I thank God that you are here. You get to join us in our series that we're doing, hallelujah, all, all year. Uh, we are working uh, on spiritual transformation. So as we thought that the born again life is a life that is full of transformation, not inspiration. And you get inspired for a day and be like, oh, I heard a good message, I'm inspired. But then you go back to your old self. But we want total transformation so that people see you, amen? And what we've been, the transformation is a transformation of love. Uh, the Bible says, love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, not Pastor Hicks, Jesus said that these two fulfill everything that the prophets uh, was trying to talk about in the Old Testament. Love your Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so that's, we've been in a journey of transformation uh, in terms of love, our love levels. Amen. And so what we found out, though, is every time we, every time we fall, every time we slip, uh, it is either we're not loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, or we're not loving our neighbor as ourselves. It, it, anytime you find out that you have slipped and fallen, and you're like, oh, Lord, uh, Lord forgive me, and, and, and you know, I, I didn't mean it, or whatever it might be, that's what it is. You didn't love God uh, uh, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then you didn't love your neighbor as yourself, and so that was a slip. And so what we found in the Word was a remedy to slipping and falling. And, 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 it, and it, it's in 2 Peter chapter 1, and, and we have been trying to take that apart, um, you know, piece by piece, but I, I want to read it to you. What the Word of God says, in view of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement or add to your faith uh, with a generous provision of, of moral excellence. What did you get add from? That's in the King James Version. So, I, I, you know, I kind of like that add, but supplement and add is the same thing. So you supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge. Then it says, uh, and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness. And then, and, come on, keep going. And godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. 
And then in the next um, verse, it says, the more you grow like this, Christianity is, is, is a growth process. You just don't get it. You have to work on it. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at verse 9. But those who fail to develop in this way, understand, we're talking about Christians. There are going to be Christians that develop in this way, grow like this, and then there are going to be Christians who fail to develop this way. Those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. Remember, if, if you don't develop this way, you will forget that Jesus died for your sins, that you've been free from sin, and you don't have to sin no more. But you can forget, right? It says, so dear brothers and sisters, work hard. This is for those that think Jesus did it all on the cross, and I don't have to do anything. Work hard, I'm reading from the Bible, this is not my own personal book. Work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never, help me say never, you will never fall away. Now I didn't say it, I, you know, so all those people say, oh, you ain't, you know, you ain't perfect, you ain't, you, you can't, you, you gonna see it. Look, I'm just telling you what the Bible said. There is a way to grow. There is a way to live. There are some things to do that can help you never fall away. Fall away from what? Loving the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so today, as you saw there, there was, there was a, a, an application process. It was almost like building blocks. First, you started with faith. And then you add to your faith moral excellence. We did that in the first part of this year. And now we're talking about adding knowledge to moral excellence to faith. Amen? Because we're growing. We're building. We're doing what needs to be done so that we will never fall away. Amen? And so that's the key piece. And as, as I said, uh, it, you know, the, the one scripture, as I said, it says, the more you grow like this the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not too many people, hallelujah, that, that don't know the name Jesus. There are some that know the name Jesus but have not accepted him as Lord and Savior. There are some that have said that they have accepted him as Lord and Savior, but they are not productive or useful in the knowledge of that. And so the Bible says the more you grow like this, what? Increasing your faith by adding these things to your faith, uh, the word of God says you will be productive and useful. Amen? So our goal is to be productive and useful with the knowledge of God. Our goal is to be productive and useful with the knowledge of God. Amen? Let's go on to the next scripture. Word of God says in Colossians 2 and 2, it says, I want them, talking about us, right? Talking about those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. Sounds like what we've been talking about. Sounds like when Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. It says, I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is in Christ himself. Everything didn't just happen. God didn't react to the events that led to the crucifixion of Christ. It was a plan. It was a plan that God put in place so that you and I can be reconnected back to God. That was his plan. It had to happen. So the Bible says it, uh, in verse 3, In him who Jesus lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And so it's in him. Uh, uh, Jesus said, if, 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 if I be in you, right, and you be in me, we, look, we, we, we have to be in him. We have to be so close to Christ that, 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 that you know, what he did is what we want to do. How he loved is how we want to love. How he had compassion is how we want to have compassion. You know, uh, you know, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. He is our example. 
We are to take our eyes off of the world and put our eyes on him. Bible says, keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Because this world will, uh, it will confuse you. It will distract you. It will make you think it's right. The only thing about that is the Bible never changes, but the world changes uh, day by day and year by year. Things that are normal today were, were unheard of 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And so the Bible said we have to have confidence. We have to have, uh, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I've heard the older saints call it Holy Ghost boldness. We have the confidence. We got to have confidence about who we are in Jesus Christ, right? Because it, 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 it is because we don't understand the knowledge uh, we've been given. So if we, don't, if we don't know who we are, if we don't have confidence in who we are, it's because we don't understand. We, we have a word. You know, a lot of people that go to church and they get word. They go, oh, oh man, oh, we, had a good, we had a good service. Pastor preached the wallpaper off the wall. But yeah, and they say, oh, we felt good. But what did he say? What did he say? What are you, what did you take to use that you're using in your life? What knowledge did you get that you under that you now understand? And that's the key thing. You get knowledge, but you get it to understand it. And if you don't understand it, then it was knowledge that you can't do anything with. My son, Jim, Jonathan, used to come home with, with, with uh, all kinds of uh, math problems, and he was doing stuff that I never got into. And, and even if they sent home the answers, I had knowledge I can't do nothing with. <laughs> they, they give me the answers, but I can't tell you how to get there. So not all knowledge is useful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Word of God says in Hebrews 5 and 7, while, Je while Jesus was here on earth, I, 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 when I was listening to y'all on Sunday school this morning, I was like, man, if they don't get out of my message, like some of them ain't even going to have to come today if they keep going the way they're going. <laughs> Hebrews 5 and 7, while Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Let's go to the next scripture, but something got it. Uh, here's a tidbit to get out of that. There are a lot of us who are praying, but we have no reverence for God. The Bible says Jesus heard, I mean, God heard his son, Jesus, because he had a deep reverence for God. And, 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 and you know, all God has to do is, is, is to see how you talking, see how you acting, see where you going, and he will understand that you have no reverence for it, him, but you yet want him to answer. Bible says uh, in the next verse, even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. That sound familiar to y'all talking to what y'all was talking about today? He learned obedience. Even, even though he was the son of God, he learned obedience from the things he suffered, but we don't want to go through nothing. We're looking like, well, I'm saved. I ain't supposed to, you know, what's wrong? Oh, Lord, why am I going through this? Oh, Lord. I... Forgetting that the word says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. My job is not to focus on what I'm going through. My job is to focus on continually being righteous by adding the word of God to my life. It's not about me. My, my righteousness is as filthy rags as the word of God says, but it's about applying word to my life. That's how I become righteous. And that's how I know I can stand on the word, knowing that God will bring me out of everything I've gone through. I didn't, look, I didn't, I didn't been through cancer. I didn't been the blood clots. I didn't been through a broken ankle. I didn't been, th I didn't been through it. I got anybody that been through it. Hallelujah. But many are the afflictions of the righteous and God's going to bring you out. 
I, I, I was uncomfortable. I know being afflicted is not good. But I got a promise. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Hebrews 5 and 9. In this way, God qualified him, who? Jesus, as a perfect high priest. And he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. He's the source. Eternal salvation. Hallelujah. For all those who obey him. Why? Because he obeyed God. He always said, I come to do the will of the Father. The Bible says, and God designated him to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Woo. I ain't going to go too much in this, but this right here, this be a whole sermon. He's in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was, 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 was before Abraham. Abraham was before Moses. Moses was before it, it, all of the Israelites and everything that had to go through and everything, the Ten Commandments and all of that, all of that happened after Abraham met Melchizedek. When Jesus becomes the high priest in the order of Melchizedek, those of us who have accepted Jesus bypass everything that happened to the Israelites and go back to Melchizedek, who, who, who Abraham gave the first tenth of anything to. You got these people talking, walking around trying to do all, everything at the old time. Jesus came to do away with that. You've been bound up by all those rules and regulations, and Jesus came to get us away from all of that. But I want you to, when they start talking about Melchizedek, I want you to hear what comes next, because this is, this is kind of the, the main point. Let's go to this. There is much more we would like to say about this. What? About Jesus being a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. That's the meat of this thing. That's when you understand that, you understand who you are. But he says, but it's difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. It ain't Pastor Hicks. That's what the word of God said. I'm trying to tell you about who you are. I'm trying to tell you about who you serve. I'm trying to tell you about what, who, you know, who he is and where he's taking you. But you ain't listening. You're spiritually dull. Let's keep going. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are babies. You're like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. That's like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah, Jesus was born of Mary and he died on the cross and he was resurrected. And, and, and on the third day, on Easter, you know, Easter, you know, Christmas. You still like babies. We're trying to tell you some, some deep stuff. We're trying, to, we're trying to allow you to understand who you are, what you can do, the confidence you need to have in Christ Jesus. But you lack the knowledge because you won't listen. The Bible says for someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. You know them Christians, they are always talking about, is it a sin if I do this? Is it a sin if we go, if it, the, the, the fact that you're asking means you know you're doing something that's close to the line. Now you want to know if it's a sin because you already know it don't look right. You already know. You already know that people can think something wrong of it. You still a baby. But you've been saved for 10 years. You still want to do what you used to do. But if you could understand the power that you could have and the things, hallelujah, that, 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 that this world would have to respond to you based upon who you are. Bible says solid food is for those who are mature, who through training, what are we talking about? Add to, you know, you know, if you grow in this way, add to your faith, moral excellence, add to your moral excellence, knowledge, add to your, it's, if, it says through training 
have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. There are some people who open their Bibles on Sunday, don't open it again to the next Sunday. You can't, you can't train no way like that. You can't get on the track. You can't run track and get on the track on the first day and, and then no track and run no more and think you're going to run around, you know, you're going to win. You have to train. Training, hallelujah, uh, uh, makes us obligated to increasing the knowledge of God. We have to be obligated to increasing what we know. Why? Because you need to be able to use what you know out there. What you're getting in here is not just for you. It's for you to get it, to understand it, and then to give it back. Bible says, keep on asking and you will receive what, what, what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open. Some people pray and be like, oh God, I don't know what's wrong. You ain't giving me what I wanted. You. He, he telling you it, not now. Do like this, money, money could be like, don't be telling my business. I don't care. Look, when they was looking for a house, they was, they was looking for a, 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 a house that they could fix up. Now I'm talking about, I'm talking about, when I talk about them, I'm talking about faithful tithers. I'm talking about, I'm talking about people who can get a prayer through. And, and they wasn't getting a house. They might have did 20, put 20 offers in and they didn't get that house. Any of them. And, you know, it makes you begin to doubt. But then when they found out that, hallelujah, that, that, the, the kind of house they were trying to get, they was going, they was trying to get a house for a small amount, put the rest of the money on it and, and fix it up. Well, their loan wouldn't do that. And if, if, if God had allowed them to get that house, they would have been stuck. And so sometimes you ain't getting what you asked for, but God is saying, I'm trying to protect you. I'm trying to keep you from making a mistake. Just It's a no, but it ain't the no the kind that you're thinking of. It's a no of protection. It ain't a no of I'm upset with you. And how do I know? Because the minute, y'all y'all listening? The minute they found that out, the first house they bid it on, they got. See, I'm sorry, see, see that's, that's the God we serve. He'll keep you, he'll keep you, hallelujah. He'll keep your crops from being taken. All we're looking for, all we look, we, we're looking for the money, where the money? But sometimes he'll decrease your debt. I got any people where the student loan been forgiven? Hallelujah, student loan. You just woke up one day and you saw a zero. So I was, look at God, look at God, look at God, look what God has done. I didn't ask for that, but that's what he did. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, hallelujah, Pastor Reddick with the key. I mean, so, so the Bible says everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks, fine. Everyone who knocks, the door will be open. You just got to be spiritually sensitive to, to what you get. It may not be what you want, may not be exactly what you asked for, but it took you to where you needed to be. It said, your parents, you parents, if your children ask you for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone? No. It says, if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So then the Bible says, as it continues to go, it says, so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give gifts to those who ask? But the, but the key is, one, knowledge. Understand what is, is what you're asking for something that a holy God will give you? Is what you're asking for tied into the life that you want to live for him? You know, some people, God has said, do not use that scripture like I'm a genie in the bottle. You can't rub on me and get no three wishes. You have a you have a job. I don't care if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have a new vocation. Your vocation now is to be witnesses of Jesus. So you have to ask yourself: Am I what I'm asking for going to uh, uh, increase 
uh, my, my new vocation. It's going to help me. Some of y'all, I want a new car and won't let nobody in it. Won't bring nobody to church. You just want it so it can sit out there so you can flaw, so you can be out there and show people what you have. How are you increasing the kingdom with that? Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Increasing your knowledge of the word of God must become our expectation. I, I want to know more. I, you know, I was talking to, is he here tonight? I, I was talking to a young man uh, the other day and, and I was telling him, I said, man, I, what I've learned in the last few years is that if, if, if you have a goal that you can accomplish by yourself with your knowledge, your strength, you know, your intellect, you don't need God. You got the whole plan, God. If you just help me get this, I got it all figured out. If you do this, you do this. I just, this is what I, I just, this is what I want. What you need God for? You have it already figured out. You just need, you, you just go to the bank with your business plan. God is looking for people who, 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 are, who are living for him in such a way that you ask for something that you, you don't even know how it can happen, but that's what you're asking God for. That's what, God is, that's what God is looking for because he wants you to test him based upon how you're living. He said, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. And then he said, look, choose life. God wants to walk with us. He wants to talk with us. He wants you to live in expectation of what he can do. God has taken us through so many, uh, so many ups and downs. There was no way in my mind I thought we could build a house, but we trusted God. And in the midst of that, someone said, hey, will you help us build an apartment building? I'm like, what? But what I learned from God is just go, yes. Yes. <laughs> do you know how to do that? Nope. But somebody's that? yes. Does it seem too big for you? Yes. Does it seem too big for God? No. That's the mindset. I mean, that's, that's how we, we need to go. Hallelujah. If, we, if, we are, if, if our mindset is, is there, that nothing is too big for God. Hallelujah. That, that no, no matter what it is, no matter what it looks like. What, what did we say last year that we're doing this year? Every day, you get up in the morning, ask God for wisdom. He said, if you ask for it, I'll give it to you. Most of the mistakes we make is because we don't have the wisdom that we need uh, for that situation. That's it. Bible says in, in, in Hosea 4 and 6, I'm just going to read the first, first part because it has a, a colon, hallelujah, after it. So it's just a descriptive piece after that. It says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. A lot of us are going through what we're going through because of a lack of knowledge. I don't know what the word says. I don't know how to apply that to my life. I don't know. I mean, you just, you don't know. And God, you know, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Everything that you need to know for every aspect of your life, hallelujah, is in that word of God. It's in the word of God. But lack of knowledge prevents us from growing in the word. Now, you can grow in the world without, well, you know, without, with a lack of knowledge of the word, the devil, the devil can open all kinds of doors for you. How do I know? Because he offered it to Jesus. And because he offered it to Jesus, don't you think he can offer it to you? But the end is still going to be eternal death. I don't want what I can get from uh, 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 the devil. I want everything, though, I can get from the Lord, from a relationship with God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, uh, and this is one we know, we, we, we read Romans 8. 10 and 8, 10 and 9, but I want you to see this. It says, for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and by confessing with your mouth that you are saved, right? That's how, you know, it says, um, and the scripture tells us anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced, anyone. And then the Bible says, Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. So there are people trying to divide us, and, you know, and, and, you know, but 
and, and try to make it believe that the, the word of God is not for everybody. But my Bible says Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who Jew and Gentile who give generously to all who can call on him. Everybody who calls on the name of the Lord, everybody who calls on the name Jesus. See, everybody doesn't believe Jesus is, is, is our way to God. Everybody doesn't call on the name of Jesus, but those that do, those that believe him, those that make him Lord and Savior. Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be. Oh, y'all, y'all sing your Bible, sing your Bible. And, and, and remember what you saved from. You saved from the sin that was in your life that was sending you to hell. That's what you say from. But this is the piece. This is where your knowledge comes in. This is why it's so important for you to leave here with something that you could share with someone else. The word of God says, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? You're not going to get everybody to come to church. You've got, to, you've got to take that word in you and give it to people no matter where you are. It is that word that you get that plants, begins to plant. Somebody else might come and water, but God is going to bring that increase. But you've got to do, and we've got to do what we're supposed to do. Knowledge is, like I said, knowledge is for us to learn, us to use, and then for us to give to someone else. That's why I tell everybody, don't try to repeat the whole sermon. Just, just write something down. Get something that you understand. If you be like, you know, like I used to be, I used to be like, oh, man, I got that. I got that. Write that down. Share that with somebody. Where am I? Last few scriptures. There's two ways that the word of God is spread to the world. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's not mine. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There you go. Two, there's, two, there's two ways. The first one, well, the first one is for a pastor. The Bible says that uh, I will give you pastors. I will give you pastors who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. I will give you pastors who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. A pastor's job is to guide you. And he says, and, and, and the king in the New Living says, guide, guide you with knowledge and understanding about the word. Understand, I, I'm a guide. Any guide is guiding you to a destination. I'm guiding you to Jesus, who Jesus says, uh, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father. Oh, y'all heard that. My job is to guide you with knowledge and understanding to get to that point so that you take Jesus to God. Your focus is not me. Your focus is not a church. Your focus, I am to guide you with knowledge and understanding about that word so you have enough knowledge and understanding to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And then I continue to give you knowledge and understanding about the life you're supposed to live after you accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. But that's my only job. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And then after that, the word of God says, it says, therefore, I think that's in Matthew. Let's go to that one. Hallelujah says, therefore, there you go. Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Who's that go to? That go is to you and it's to me. That's everybody. Amen. Now, we are supposed to, it says, teach these new disciples to obey the commands I have given you. Well, how do you know the commands? You have to be taught them. You have to be. You have to. You have to know them, and you have to understand them. If you, if you have days and weeks go by where you are not talking to somebody about Jesus, something is wrong. I pray. I, look, I prayed for this. I, I understand. I sat at a table. Was it? 20 years ago now, 20 years ago, 
I was a youth minister. I was youth pastor. I was bringing people to the church to speak to the youth. And then we, we invited some to come to our home and they were sitting at the table and they was like, man, what do you think Paul meant when he said this and that? And what about Peter and that? And I'm sitting at the table and going, I know some scriptures. But they were sitting at the table, these young brothers, sitting at the table talking about Jesus and the word of God like we would sit and talk about the calves or the browns. And I'm going, I am out of my league. I know of the word, but I don't know it. I don't know it. I can't talk about it. I can't, I can't have a, a convert, an intellectual conversation about what did Paul mean when it, I don't even know what y'all talking about that he said. I ain't even got there yet. <laughs> but that's, I said, Lord, I want that. I want that. I want to, I want to understand your word. There's power in that word. We just stuck with, now nah, lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord. Ain't even in the Bible. The more words you have, the more Jesus you have. Jesus is living, breathing, a uh, uh, word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and word was with God. Jesus is the word. The more words you have, the more Jesus you have. And this is my last scripture. It ain't even one o'clock. Word of God says this, but when the father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. It's important. See, the thing is, he's not going to remind you of, of, of things you haven't even put in there. But he's not going to make you have to memorize the whole Bible. And so the Holy Spirit is there, you know, to bring back something that, that you heard in, in, in 1985. And now you, 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 can, you can finally understand it. I ain't, a, I ain't a babe no more. I'm not on milk no more. I can handle some strong meat now. Now I can get that word. But the thing is, is that the, the more you listen to, the more you, 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 you listen to understand. Right? It, there's one thing, y'all ever been in conversations, or let me, let me not say conversations. You ever been in arguments where... You was just waiting for somebody to just finish. They trying to get their point across, but but you, you you know they they just you know they going back you going back and forth and you like this is all you say are you done yet? You're not trying to understand. You just want them to stop talking. Well, we can't do that with the Word of God. We've got to listen to understand. And if you don't understand, ask a question. I don't, know, I don't have any problem with somebody coming up to me afterwards saying, Pastor, I don't know what you just said about that. I need you to explain it. We have Bible study. People, I, I tell people all the time, argue me down. I don't care. Because I'm going to show you in the word where I got what I got. You show me in the word where you got what you got. Let's talk about it. And if you prove to me, you know, hey, this is what the words say, I'll be like, hey, thank you, Jesus. You didn't kept me from going to hell over that issue. I'm trying not to go to hell. I don't know about y'all. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I ain't trying to be right. I'm trying to uh, 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 agree. I'm trying to live right. There you go. If I'd have thought of that, I'd have said that. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so your accumulation of knowledge will keep you from being destroyed because the Holy Spirit has a job to bring that back. That's how important the word is. The Holy Spirit's job. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to make nobody mad at me, but we didn't gave the Holy Spirit jobs. It's not, he's like, it ain't my job to make you run around the church. It ain't my job. It's my job to bring back to 
uh, 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 your remembrance with Jesus said. It's my job. He, got, he said, it's my job to help you be a proper witness for him. Oh, come on, we're standing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have been listening to Words to Grow Right with Reverend Jimmy Hicks, Jr. We pray that this word takes root in your life.